Hey everyone, this is Connor with Down the Block Sports coming at you with another episode of the Alec Walt Show. Joining me today, of course, the eponymous man himself, Alec Walt. Walt, what's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm doing well, man. You know, we're a couple days away from the start of the NFL season. I'm excited. You know, obviously it's unfortunate I didn't get to see Tom Brady lift that Super Bowl in New England, of course, but, you know, it's exciting to see him kick off the season week one. A great matchup. I'm excited, and there's a team in the same division as Tom Brady who I think is going to be sneaky awesome this year that no one is talking about. So, Connor, I'm excited to talk about that team. I'm excited for the NFL season. I'm excited to be talking sports with you here on Down the Block Sports. Absolutely, and as you just mentioned, they're in that same division, NFC South. Carolina Panthers is the team, if you haven't guessed already, well, the Panthers traded for Sam Darnold this offseason. You know, how does the offense look with him under center? I absolutely love this addition for Sam Darnold for the Carolina Panthers. Remember, Connor, he played for the New York Jets, a team I got to watch, unfortunately, way too many times. And they just weren't very good. I mean, they were excited when they drafted Sam Darnold, as they should have been. But he had coaching changes, general manager changes, offensive coordinator, coordinator changes, skill position players that really weren't that good. And when he finally found a productive receiver, Robbie Anderson, he signed a contract with the Carolina Panthers. So, you know, I think this offense looks solid because Matt Rule is a very good good head coach he's a pocket passer can scan the field you know solid skill set players around him so you know I like this a lot I think with him in Carolina right now he's going to a position with some stability for the first time in his career Matt Rule signed that long-term contract I don't see him leaving anytime soon the defense is getting better better the schedule is realistic I think Sam Darnold has a chance to have a true bounce back season he had a couple years in New York that simply weren't very good it's a great restart at a very young age I love this marriage right now early on with Sam Darnold on the Carolina Panthers so speaking of the Carolina Panthers their marquee player Christian McCaffrey is back from a long-term injury do you think he can how, how can he elevate the Panthers offense offense he elevates his Panthers offense because he is when he's healthy one of the best running backs in the National Football League. He's a guy who's nasty with the ball in his hands. He's also one of, if not the best receiving running back in football. He's the complete package. He's a three down back. And, you know, when you have a young quarterback and you're trying to help him progress in a new offense, one of the best things you can give him is a solid running back. Now, the added bonus for McCaffrey, of course, like I mentioned, is his receiving abilities. Now, McCaffrey is absolutely unbelievable and you know, going into his age 25 season, as many years left with him, he unfortunately did get injured last year. It's the reality of the position. We see running backs get injured all the time. Um, he is coming back at his 20, age 25 season, so I still think there's definitely a couple more years of successful production for him as well. In 2019, he had 287 carries, 1,387 rushing yards, and 15 rushing touchdowns. 142 targets, which is nuts. Just shows how often they like to give him the football. 116 catches, 1,005 receiving yards, and four touchdowns. So, again, a multi-purpose back. He improves you on the ground. He improves your receiving game. He is an absolute star for the Carolina Panthers. He is going to make Sam Darnold's life so much easier in this transition. I think it's a perfect match. His guy's a stud. Carolina Panthers man should be pumped that this guy's going to be back in the lineup next year. Speaking of other players that can catch the ball, how will the weapons around Darnold perform? See, I like this receiving core. Now, obviously, they are losing a piece in Curtis Samuel as he signed that three-year contract with the Washington football team, but they are getting someone like Christian McCaffrey back, who I mentioned before is a solid receiver out of the backfield. But when you look at Darnold's weapons next year and it's highlighted by the two one and number one and number two receivers even though I think it's 1a 1b uh, but it's DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson I mentioned before Robbie Anderson was a former New York Jet he has experience with Sam Darnold so you like that going into this situation DJ Moore has shown flashes of being a number one wide receiver has the chance to really take that next step in his game those are two very solid threats there 
on the outside. Plus, in the draft, they did focus at wide receiver, drafting Terrace Mar- Marshall Jr. out of LSU and Shai Smith, someone I watched a ton at the University of South Carolina. Physical receiver for someone his size. You know, they added some solid depth there at the draft. I think Darnold has some very solid weapons. Plus, they also were active in free agency, going the, getting a new tight end, signing Dan Arnold from the Arizona Cardinals. Yes, they didn't just sign Rob Gronkowski, but, you know, I do think Dan Arnold's a very solid pass-catching tight end for the role he's going to be in. I expect him to be the number one uh, pass-catching tight end all season. I think his receiving core is very solid. I think McCaffrey takes it to a whole nother level because he's so freaking good out of the backfield. But, you know, I, I think Darnold has some very solid weapons next year. I think this offense is, is pretty good. It's pretty solid. And, is something someone you're going to need to watch next year in the NFL. The biggest question I think is can Darnold finish off games? Teddy Bridgewater was accused a lot of not being able to close out games. How do you think that that is going to look this season? One thing I think helps here is I think their defense is a lot better. I know we'll get into the defense a little bit later, but I do trust that the defense will improve in the fourth quarter. I think that helps a lot. Plus, next thing you, you were talking about uh, McCaffrey coming back. Uh, I think that helps a lot, but uh, you're you're completely right. I mean, the amount of times they had a lead or had the chance to take the lead in the fourth quarter and it just didn't happen was awful. And I think that's a huge reason for why Matt Rule and the Carolina Panthers decided to move on at the quarterback position. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater has shown flashes of being a very solid uh, quarterback, but last year with the Panthers in those situations, it simply didn't work. Now, I think that's one thing that we everyone needs to keep their eye on with Sam Darnold. He played for the Jets, of course. It was just a terrible situation. He, he, had a, he was in a deficit a bunch of different times. Um, he didn't have the coaching or really at the weapons. It, it was just ugly so I'm interested to see how that is Connor I do trust that Darnold will do a little bit better I think he's just overall a little bit more talented than a Teddy Bridgewater kneeling nearing his 30s but um, that definitely gave Matt Rule some sleepless nights I think it contributed a huge factor into them moving on from Teddy Bridgewater and adding Sam Darnold here in this offseason I can tell you're just itching to talk about the defense so let's just jump into it man they have the best defense in the NFL no one's talking about Okay, so do you think overrated, fairly rated, underrated? Massively underrated. Okay, why are Massively they underrated? underrated? They have impact at every level. Young impact. The ability to take that next step as a team. Maybe they don't have an elite defense next year, but I think this team is turning slowly developing into one that is going to be absolutely unbelievable. First off, let's start on the defensive line. Okay, we talk about young, talented guys. You can't start with Brian Burns, their ed- edge rusher they drafted out of Florida State a couple years ago. This guy is an absolute pass rushing monster. He's on a defensive line next to Derek Brown, who was another first round pick out of Auburn last year. Someone who is going to be a n- near double team next year. He's he's unbelievable on the inside. Uh, they just brought in Hassan Reddick from the Arizona Cardinals. Their secondary is awesome. Uh, Dante Jackson, young corner. They drafted a couple years ago. J.C. Horn, one of my favorite prospects in the draft last season at the University of South Carolina. I said before the draft started, don't be surprised if this guy's the first cornerback taken. Carolina took him first off the board. I think J.C. Horn is an absolute stud. Plus, they have one of the best safeties in the NFL, Jeremy Chin, who was on like the all-rookie team last year, blew up. As one of the best multi-purpose, he lines up all over the field. This kid is the complete package at that safety position. They are young. They have impact. They are growing as a team. They are building into one of the better defenses in the NFL. No one is talking about them. Yet they have impact at every single spot. Young kids that can take that next step in their game. I think this defense is way better than people are giving them credit for. And I think they're really going to show this year why that they're going to take that next step in their game. A lot of people want to talk about Sam Darnold and the offense and Matt Rule and Joe Brady. I get it. They're easy things to talk about. But I'm telling you this right now. No one talks about this defense. It's going to be one of the it's going to be massively improved in 2021. Something that is also very exciting. Jets Panthers week one. How do you think Darnold does in, in this first matchup? Well, he's going to see what a competent organization playing an incompetent organization looks like right off the bat. I mean, I'll give the Jets credit. I do think this is they did hire one of the better head coaches they have in a long time. Robert Salah is a solid coach. I wish they gave Salah or Darnold someone like that when he started 
in his career. But I know this is a uh, is a Panthers conversation on the channel. I, I think Darn will be fine. Again, like I mentioned before, McCaffrey's coming back. He's fully healthy. He's on a much better team uh, with the solid receiving core, solid defense game one of Zach Wilson and Salah. So I do think the, the Jets are clearly not contending anytime soon. Um, so I think Darnold's out to kind of stick out, stick the middle finger to management. You know, I think he has the chance to have a very, very, very solid game. Um, Darnold's obviously moved on from the Jets. You know, they're co- a complete mess. Now he's in a great situation in Carolina. But give the NFL a lot of credit for uh, making the Jets actually watchable here in week one. And I'm not saying the Jets watchable for their sake. It's the fact that Darnold gets to uh, put up some huge numbers in his debut for Carolina. Absolutely. That'll be an exciting game to watch. Lastly, um, looking at their schedule, it looks like the second half is a lot tougher than the first half. What do you think is a realistic finish for Carolina? One thing I like to focus on for teams that have the chance to make the playoffs is, is this team, can this team get to 10 wins? And I think this team can, because I don't think their schedule is that difficult. Now, you mentioned before their second half is way more difficult than their first half, which I think is better because if they can figure it out for the first couple weeks, they can win some of those more competitive games. If their first half and their second half were flipped, I'd be a little bit nervous. But, you know, you start with the Jets. You know, you have a division matchup against the Saints without Michael Thomas. Texans, who are one of the worst teams in football. Dallas, I think, is very good. The Eagles are not very good. The Vikings are not very good, even though they are very talented. I think their off, their offensive skill pieces are off the charts, but I still think that's a team you can win. Uh, the Giants, you know, they're still more of a mystery team, but I think they're very beatable. You play the Falcons twice. The Falcons are not very good. Um, the Patriots will be competitive. That game is, though, at home. They go to Arizona, long road trip, but I do think that's a game they can win. Washington is one of the best defenses in the NFL, so there's no guarantee. The Dolphins are definitely a team looking to take that next step. Uh, Still a winnable matchup, but a tough game. Falcons, again, I mentioned before, aren't very good. Bills and Bucks are teams I don't see them beating. We'll see what the Saints look like in New Orleans with hopefully Michael Thomas back in the lineup. So, you know, there are some winnable games in here, a bunch of 50-50 matchups, not a ton of definite losses in my opinion. So I do think this team can absolutely get to that 10-7 and seven mark, maybe maybe climb a little bit higher. They're ranked 23rd in strength of schedule. You look at the Saints like you've seen many a times. Their schedule is a heck of a lot harder. And when I'm ever in that 50-50 spot, you look at the schedules. I think they have a much more manageable road to that maybe that 10-win mark. The NFC is a lot harder. I don't think they're a lock to make the playoffs, but I do think this Carolina team, Panther team, is absolutely in position to take that next step and prove that they're getting close to being one of the more relevant teams in the NFC. I I think don't sleep on this Carolina Panther team in 2021. I I think they have a chance to be pretty good. And being based out of the Charlotte area, I'll be able to see them. I'm trying to go to one of the games. Uh, You know which one relatively soon. I got to buy my tickets. Walt, thanks for sitting down and chatting. Any final thoughts or anything before we wrap up? No, I mean, I'm mean, just looking forward to seeing the start of the regular season. Like I mentioned before, Tampa Bay kicks off on Thursday against the Dallas Cowboys. That should be exciting. But again, Sam Darnold facing his old team week one with this new Carolina Panther team. I'm excited, man. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing what this season can bring us, but definitely looking forward to seeing what this Panthers team can do. I think they are slowly on the rise here in the NFL. Absolutely. I think it'll be a very exciting team to watch as well. If you haven't already subscribed to Down the Block Sports, hit the notification bell so you never miss one of our videos. And make sure you smack that like button, share the video, let us know how we're doing in the comment section below. Walt, pleasure as always, man. We'll see you next time.